Oh no, not this song. Oh, it's a band director's worst nightmare. Oh. And welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today's music teacher reaction video will be on Careless Whisper by George Michael. Uh, now, as you saw in my little intro there, uh, I am a band director as well as a general music teacher. And this might be one of my all-time <laughs> most hated songs. Not necessarily because it's a bad song. It's certainly not a bad song. But as a music teacher, saxophone players, if you are unfamiliar with the song, love the opening solo. And as soon as they hear it, they all try to learn it and mimic it and play it all the time. <laughs> so I have heard this opening sax solo probably no less than 500,000 times in my lifetime. With that being said, everybody, let's get into it. Set in the mood. I love the captions. Sultry music. Okay, let's pause real quick. So one, this, this again, this might be the most famous saxophone uh, solo of all time that we heard at the opening part. Uh, if you've never heard this before, I, I don't I don't know how it's possible. Um, I, it is from the 80s, so it, maybe if you're a little bit younger, you have an excuse. I could see that. Um, but man, is this famous because of the saxophone solo. Um, the, the It just, it sets that mood. As it says in the captions, it says sultry music. Like, how can you not kind of get in the mood? You know what I'm talking about? Whenever you hear that opening part with the saxophone there at the beginning, it's so good. Um, I want to talk real quick about how, how just vintage 80s this is. It's such a vintage 80s sound. Um, it, it just, again, with the saxophone solo right off the bat, first and foremost. But even just the, the laid back feel, like it's a real laid back ballad. I would almost argue it's not even a ballad because it's kind of so laid back. Um, but I love what they do with the the tambourine. And then I think it might be a bongo plus something else percussive. Maybe maybe a temple block. It's a little hard to tell for sure what, what it is. Um, but they're, they're typically... So typically you would have in most rock music, for instance, you would have either a tambourine on two and four or you would have just the temple block slash bongo on two and four and what they're doing is they're alternating between the two of them so even though this song is it's very very slow um it's giving you a little bit of variety for your ear to kind of listen to so it doesn't get bored with it because when you really do really really slow songs like this that kind of are more ballad-esque you have to have a little bit more variety in it to keep your ear intrigued and listening to it so i love that just some of the writing that they did with that to kind of keep it fresh for you uh, let's go ahead and keep going here Love that guitar solo. Nice bass line. Oh, yeah. I can really hear the bongo coming through. Oh, 
There it is. So sultry. Okay, so let's let's break down that that whole sequence that just happened there. I, I love the writing of this. The writing is really really good. So we talked about at the beginning how they're using that that contrast between the the bongo and the um, tambourine just for variety effect. Well, you can hear that they kind of doubled down on that, and the bongo part got a little bit more complex as we progressed through this and got into the main chorus. Um, so I love that idea. That it, what that does is instead of it feeling like such a long slow drawn out four pattern it kind of creates this more rhythmic fast paced feel to it it's very very common in a lot of latin music um anytime you have kind of a slow effect and you add a lot of faster paced latin parts underneath it it kind of gives a little bit of that energy especially when you hit a climax part like that um the other thing i love i love 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 about this is that guitar part uh, the one, the bass line was really cool. I love the bass line, but the guitar part that they threw in here, like it has a real flamenco feel to it. And it's just super, dare I say, sexy. Like it's super sexy sounding. That flamenco style of guitar playing that they've got going on through that uh, leading up into our our climax of the chorus there. Really, really cool parts that they threw in and, and variation that they threw in for effect. Um, and we haven't even talked about the vocals yet. <laughs> Let's continue on. We'll focus a little bit more on the vocals this time. Here we go. Nice head voice there. I love this. Okay, before we continue with our sax feature again here, so the vocals one, just just that that line, da 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 da. da I mean, it's so catchy, but also I love what they're doing in terms of they're adding an echo through part of this as well for effect the second time we hear it. Um, again, it just gives again variation, just a little extra nibble for your ear to listen to. The other thing I wanted I wanted to point out and see if you guys noticed or not, the bass line this time got a little bit more complex uh, and kind of was brought out a little bit more front. So we, we got more of the bass line there uh, as opposed to the first time where we heard a lot of the Congo, or sorry, the bongo, I should say, not the conga. Uh, the bongo kind of take the front end of that theme there. This time the bass line kind of took center stage and then they used the guitar this time with some runs along with the bass to kind of accent some of the transitions from end of um, a, a particular section into the next particular part of the section. It was really, really, really well done. I, I just love a lot of the, the little things that they're throwing in here just for your ear to feast on. Really, really cool. Let's keep going. Just great use of his head voice. Very nice. Very well done. Interesting. We're throwing a little bit of syncopation in there. Everything's been really straight, even. Okay, so before we close out here, just real quick, so I, I commented on how we're throwing in syncopation in that section. So uh, syncopation, for those of you guys that don't know, is whenever you put basically a strong accent or emphasis on it, what we call an offbeat. 
So where it's not on. So essentially, if you think of it this way, if you were tapping your foot, the strong, the strong notes that you're hearing are when your foot is up off of the ground, as opposed to when it's down on the ground. So typically in most, uh, especially rock music in particular, you're going to feel the strong beats when your foot's on the ground, whether it be two or two and four, which is most common or one and three, depending on what you're listening to. Um, but in this case, we're getting a lot more of those accents occurring on the upbeat or the offbeat where your foot is up. Interesting, just again, variation. This song seems to be all about, you know, adding in varied things to keep your ear interested and intrigued throughout the ballad, which is a really good effect, especially with a ballad. Ballads can get kind of boring if you don't have any variation. All right, let's go ahead and finish it out here, folks. Nice little licks from the guitar there. All right. I, I love this song. I'll be honest with you. So even though I have heard that saxophone solo 500 bazillion times, I have no idea. There's no way to keep count there. I don't know that I have ever actually listened to this song in its entirety. And I got to say, I'm very impressed with it. Um, it is it is distinctively 80s. It definitely has a strong 80s vibe to it, uh, including the hair. <laughs> the hair is very 80s. But I really just, I loved, again, all of the complexity that they threw in there. I, I was kind of expecting just a real simple, basic 80s ballad, you know, love ballad. And, and there's so many cool layers that they've really put into that, whether it be that neat bass line, the flamenco guitar. Oh, I love that part. That was really, really cool. Um, you know, just so many really cool things going on in that song. Uh, definitely, definitely glad it was recommended to me, guys. Uh, this was this was a bit of a troll song, so some some of my uh, watchers over on Twitch found out that the song drives me crazy, <laughs> and so they really, really, really pushed to have this be one that I did a review on. And I'm actually I'm actually really glad that they did because I like I said I don't know that I've ever listened to the entire song, and it was really good. I really liked it. So appreciate it, those of you guys that were were trolling on me. Well done, well done. <laughs> um, folks, if you liked what you saw today, uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up, please. If you want to catch more content from the uh, that I'm putting out, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss anything in the future. Um, I also mentioned that if you uh, have anything that you want to mention and or uh, suggest for future video reviews, feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, last but not least, if you want to join the selection process, essentially, as I mentioned on Twitch, on Sundays, we do a, a vote for which songs I will do reactions to. You can certainly recommend them in YouTube comments, but we make the ultimate decision over on Twitch on Sundays. If you would like to join that and have a say in which songs we actually do, uh, feel free to check out the links down below in the comments, and you guys can catch us out on Discord and or Twitch. All right, everybody. Catch you next time.